need reading glasses after the age of 40? Even after a lifetime of perfect vision? If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, board certified ophthalmologist and on this channel we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health and a little bit of my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow along. All right, what's up with needing reading glasses? Likely if you stumbled upon this video, you are like me over the age of 40. I'm a little bit well into my 40s, I'm 46. And I definitely noticed over the last few years, I am dependent on reading glasses in order to see things up close. What's up with that? Why do we need that? So this is because of something called presbyopia. Presbyopia is basically the loss of the focusing power of the lens as we age. Just as we get older and everything else starts to turn brittle and not function as well, the lens of the eye does so too. And when you're young, the lens is very elastic. It can change shape really well to help focus the light rays onto the retina so you see clearly. As you get older, the lens loses that ability to change shape. It loses that elasticity. So ultimately, once we hit 40, 45, we can no longer see things up close and that continues to worsen every single year. So symptoms are blurry vision up close, your distance vision, if you've had great vision all your life, like I always had perfect 20-20, you still have good distance vision, but your blurred vision is up close. Sometimes it can cause eye fatigue, eye strain, and even headaches if you are trying to just squint through it or do what a lot of people do is just move their reading material further and further back. But eventually you're gonna run out of arms. You're not going to have a long enough arm to hold the reading material so that you can see it clearly. So when you're young, you can focus really well up close. We can measure this in something called accommodative amplitude. It's your amplitude of accommodation. And accommodation is your ability to focus up close. And we measure this in diopters. That's just our unit of measurement. It's one divided by the meters of how far away you have to hold everything. I know everything's in meters, nothing's in feet and inches, sorry. So basically a five-year-old or kindergartner has an accommodative amplitude of 15 diopters, which is amazing. A 10 year old or fifth grader has an accommodative amplitude of about 14 diopters. That means they can focus about seven centimeters away from their face or three inches. You try holding something three inches away and seeing if it's clear. If you are in my age group, that's very challenging. And the reason for that is our accommodative amplitude starts to diminish. It takes a huge nosedive after the age of 40. Once you hit 40 years old, your accommodative amplitude is only four diopters which is very, very small. You can basically hold things at about 25 to 30 centimeters and see them, but it's not that clear. And that's why you start to need reading glasses. Now, if you're lucky like I was, and you never needed glasses all growing up, then you can actually buy those cheaters or readers available at the drugstore. And you'll see they'll come with all different powers on them. And we're gonna talk about how you know what power glasses to buy in just a second. Unfortunately, if you are nearsighted or have astigmatism, you can't buy those readers from the drugstore. It just won't work for you because you need glasses that incorporate your nearsightedness and your astigmatism you'll see something called an ad power written by your eye doctor on your glasses prescription. You can get either bifocals, trifocals, or progressives. Progressives are the kind which is a gradual trend from distance, intermediate, and reading all in one glass. A bifocal has a line between distance and up close, and a trifocal has two lines, distance and then a line, computer vision, a line, and then reading vision. So that's what your option is for glasses if you are nearsighted or have astigmatism. But let's get back to a lot of people who are just like me, need just the readers. We still have great driving vision. We don't need glasses to see in the distance. How do we know what power to buy? Well, it has to do with that accommodative amplitude and you don't actually do like a one-to-one -one correspondence. It's not, that simple. Basically, we have to find a number that kind of decreases 
our need to focus that kind of fills in the gap that we don't have anymore. And here's a little table and it goes through age 40 to 44. Typically that's going to be like a plus 0.75 to anywhere to a plus 1.25. Now, a lot of drugstores don't carry plus 0.75, I'd say almost none of them, or plus 100s are really hard to find. So for those, you might end up having to either order online or buy them from your eye doctor's office. Now, if you're 45 to about 50, then you can probably get away with a plus 1.50, anywhere to a plus 1.75. You might even be able to go as far down as a plus 1.25. And then 55 to 60, plus 150 to plus 200. Now you're gonna see all sorts of different tables. If you go on Amazon and you try to buy some readers, you'll see a little eye chart associated with those glasses that might look different than an eye chart from another online glasses store or what is available at your drugstore. Why are all these eye charts different? Well, it's because everybody's a little different and our accommodative amplitude, that's actually something that can be measured though typically no eye doctor ever measures it in the office, but it just means that everyone's ability to focus, it degenerates at a different rate because we're all different. So your lens might be less elastic than my lens or vice versa. So we can't just use the age cutoff as a way of determining. It's a starting point. So here's what I recommend. Go to the drugstore, try the lowest power that you think you need based on these tables and charts, and then just grab a magazine. They are almost always situated next to the little paperback, you know, Fabio books or the magazine. So just grab a magazine and see if you can read comfortably. Now you're going to find that there's a sweet spot for reading glasses. You might hold it right here and you can see perfectly. And if you hold it a little bit closer, it's blurry. Or if you hold it further away, it's blurry. That's normal. That has to do with the vertex distance, the optical centers, all of these things to calculate the reading power. But find a pair of reading glasses that makes it clear where you normally like to hold your reading material. Now, some people, maybe you just read in bed, so you're holding it further away, or maybe you like to have things just on your desk. So you need to figure out what is your optimal reading distance. And the best way to do it is just to try a couple different pairs. When you go to your eye doctor's office, we actually will do that for you. We have a little stick, it measures, and we will judge based on where you like to hold your reading material. And we'll ask you for that information, what power you need in the reading glasses. So that's another good reason to go visit your eye doctor, especially if you are over 40, you should be seeing your eye doctor. So don't do this in lieu of seeing your eye doctor. If you just need something while you're waiting for your eye doctor's appointment, this will help you out. So are glasses the only option? Well, no, you probably have heard there's an eye drop called Vuity. I've done two reviews on it. You can check them out right here and here so that you can assess if it's right for you. There are a lot of potential side effects and complications. So I really encourage you to watch those before asking your eye doctor for a prescription. It's only available via prescription. There are also contact lenses. So there are something called multifocal contact lenses. It's basically like a progressive contact lens. Remember progressive glasses are ones that are all in one distance, up close and intermediate vision. And there are multifocal contact lenses. They work by having these rings or zones that depend on your pupil size when you are reading at various points or looking at something in the distance. Now, some people absolutely hate multifocal contact lenses. And the reason is if you're nearsighted or have astigmatism, you can get multifocal contacts. The vision's never gonna be quite as sharp or as clear as what it was with just your single vision distance. It's just a fact. It's just the way that the optics are. You're gonna sacrifice a little bit of distance clarity to be able to read without needing reading glasses. You gotta decide if that's right for you. Now for someone like me, it's not really that worth it because I like seeing nice and clear in the distance without needing contact lenses. So I'm just gonna throw on a pair of readers. But if you want, you could do something called monovision, which is put in a contact lens in one eye that allows you to see up close. And you could have a contact lens if you're nearsighted or astigmatism for the other eye to allow you to see far away. So that's an option too. Now some people, if their cataracts are progressed enough, they have cataract surgery. And at the time of cataract surgery, they put in an artificial lens, which allows you to read at all distances. So it's kind of like restoring your sight back to when you were, you know, younger, which is really amazing. But if your cataracts aren't significant enough, like, you know, at 46, 
I don't have significant cataracts and I certainly don't want cataract surgery, that's not gonna be a great option. Some people will do LASIK to do that same kind of thing with the monovision, put one eye for distance and fix one eye for up close. And then there are other types of surgeries called intacts and the like. But for the most part, reading glasses or contact lenses are the easiest. Now, a couple of questions everybody always asks is presbyopia being nearsighted or farsighted? Well, it's most like being farsighted because you can still see far away, but not up close. But really it's just its own condition. It's not the exact same thing as hyperopia because some people who are hyperopic and it's still a plus lens, you would still buy a plus glasses if you're hyperopic or presbyopic. But some people with high hyperopia, it's like a really high number, they can't see up close or far away. People with presbyopia like you and me, I'm assuming, just can't see up close, but it's certainly not nearsightedness. Another question I'm always asked is, will increasing your text size on your phone make your vision worse? Will it speed up the presbyopic process so that you need stronger reading glasses? Nope absolutely not so don't worry about that text size as large as you need to to get by as long as you can without needing reading glasses all right guys i hope that was helpful for you if you wear readers let me know drop it in the comments below what's your number how'd you figure it out and don't despair i'm in the same boat lord knows i have more than i should admit pairs of reading glasses in my closet there i just love them now i always wanted to wear glasses and now i can but it is very difficult to not be able to read those prescription bottles anymore. And every time my kids stick something in my face, I have to tell them to back it up so I can read it. If you suffer from presbyopia, or you've had any questions about needing reading glasses, please let me know. And until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.